With the final touches to the seats taken care of, it's nice to know that at least all the major re-engineering of our GT6 is behind us. Don't need that where we're going. Yeah, so the firewall's getting chopped out today. I promise you there's method to the madness. For starters, the GT6's factory firewall is just flimsy sheet metal, and ours has been massaged. Its shelf-like appearance, which no doubt aided Leyland's design simplicity, means that everything on it gets dirty and looks kind of messy. But most importantly to us, the resulting area under the dashboard is very tight, which will be problematic for most of the parts we need to fit in there. The first part being an AC and heater core. Conditioned air is essential to combat the humidity around here, and the desire for it was actually a large factor in setting the direction of this build. While this particular evaporator may be the absolute cheapest model I could find though, that fortunately doesn't bother me, as everything on it is manual and the wiring is dead simple. Plus, compared to the factory blower unit, we should have gained a bit of output. So, good deal. It is agreeably massive, but at least having all the guts means if we need to reconfigure its shape, we can. So we'll figure out the plumbing later, but for now, it should live somewhere around here. The next part we need to find a home for is a steering column, and although we still have the factory piece, remember that in episode 18 we drastically changed the geometry up here, with increased caster, wider tires, and a faster ratio. All good things, but along with a smaller diameter wheel, manual steering, while love for its feel and precision, is just not going to work for our needs. We've known this for some time, and as the modified factory rack provides not even a remote possibility for hydraulic assist, we've chosen a different solution in the form of an electrically assisted column. This one's from a Chevy Equinox, and like with the evaporator core, it's much larger than what it replaces. But unlike some smaller columns you may know about, it was available at our local wrecking yard and can be powered with one of these controller boxes, providing us with dynamic assist and hopefully an OEM plus feel. In contrast to the evaporator, which is somewhat flexible in its position though, this obviously has to live over here. If we were building the Alferrari or Project Binky. Look, it's not my fault we drive on the right side of the road. Anyway, next up we need a wheel. And as alluded to a moment ago, the power assist should make things easy to handle so we can go slightly smaller than the factory piece. This one's actually from my old STI, and it might just be a placeholder, but if not, it's nothing personal. Oh, brother. Obviously, we have to adapt the wheel to the column and the column to the rack, so we've gathered some more components that we'll go over in due course. But for instance, I don't think a Subaru hub is going to fit an Equinox spindle. Well, color me green and call me a pickle, because if you saw that coming, I sure didn't. Looking at it closely, I don't actually think the tapers are matched perfectly, so although it's likely fine, we'll probably still correct it later. For now though, it is good enough to keep us moving. It's even got a quick release, which if used could be nice in such a small car. By now it should come as no surprise that the factory brake master cylinder also isn't going back in here. As remember, we've upgraded to Crown Victoria front brakes and C4 Corvette rears, so we'll need something that'll work with them. Hydraulic multiplication is similar to gear reduction in that a small piston acting on a larger one will increase your force, but at a reduced travel. When it comes to brakes though, we not only need sufficient force to stop the car, but we also need to move enough fluid to actually apply the brakes in the first place. So after doing some calculations based on piston areas, it turns out that each set of calipers needs a different size master meaning individual masters would be the obvious choice, but a tandem cylinder is usable when paired with a proportioning valve. Let's be honest though, with a 92mm throttle body, I'm expecting a fairly touchy gas pedal, and with power assisted steering, I kind of think the brakes should be equally as delicate. That's why we got this monstrosity. You're looking at an aluminum GM style master with a 1 inch bore to mirror the factory Crown Vic sizing and a dual diaphragm 8-inch booster that should make stopping a cinch. I'll be clear that our car is light, and I'm sure that someone with enough skill could get a manual setup working beautifully. But based on some math, with a 1-inch master cylinder and just our foot, to get enough line pressure, we'd need a substantial pedal ratio. And that comes with a lot of travel, which we don't have room for. So although I want enough manual advantage to stop the car in an emergency, 
A booster is going to make life a heck of a lot nicer the rest of our time behind the wheel. Which is hopefully all of it. We couldn't use a single 9-inch booster for fitment reasons, and while a single 8-inch or dual 7-inch unit might be adequate for our needs, we got this, as it'll be easier to step down to a smaller booster than find room for a larger one. Figuring out the pedal box will be a job of its own, but at least we've got a start. Oh, and we also picked up a clutch master that's specced for our throw-out bearing. So with that, all we have to do is make this stuff fit. How hard can that be? Doodles. Don't. Show the back part, the steering don't, don't control. Don't that where we're going. Oh. <laughs> you dumped a lot of garbage, did you? So um, that was in the uh, air intake duct. All down my boot. Of course, we didn't put any of that there. No, 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 no. Wow. What a hole. What a hole, that's right. You can probably get the idea that there's far more room for activities in here now. It's almost the point where I can't even complain anymore. Almost. Before getting too involved with the next steps though, let's quickly go around the edges and tidy them up as there's a few well-placed points that I'd like to avoid puncturing myself on. Again. Okay, next, the dashboard. Just ignore those cat gauges as we're simply experimenting with ideas here and ultimately changing the layout is something for later because right now, like with a certain LS4 powered Corvair on YouTube, the whole dash is scheduled for removal. Interesting. Oh boy. I hope you know what you're doing. While we could take Finnegan's preferred route of making a flange and just Zeusing this back on later, I quite like the additional space this freed up. And hopefully it'll make our lives a little easier as we continue on. Two and a half pounds. Nine pounds. As an aside, the giant hole offers us a unique view of our powertrain while the hood is shut. And although things are certainly a tight squeeze up top, there is still adequate space to make me happy. Crisis diverted. So the first thing that we got to do is we, we've already been mocking up a little bit, but we need to start building a new tubular structure to actually hang things from because we've got a power steering column, power assisted brakes, air conditioning, things like that where they need a strong support structure other than bits of flimsy sheet metal. We decided to start with a beefy 2x4 to add strength to the A-pillars. They're already the strongest part of the body up here, but it makes sense to beef them up a bit more before tying anything new into them. So we've got our sort of A-pillar reinforcement slash extension piece here. Uh, which has now got some of uh, the corners cut off on the bottom to allow for water to drain. There shouldn't be water inside the car, but uh, it is a made, you know, Coventry, so uh, maybe this bottom corner could get some moisture in it. We just don't want that sitting and rotting anything out. So this is going to come up into here. And we'll 
get welded in place like that. And then somewhere along here, we now need two captive nuts so we can actually build out a tubular structure that goes from this pillar to the one on that side. Sounds like a plan, but I don't think we're gonna use this part. So it may have taken a few design iterations to arrive at this point, but I am very happy with the results. So that bar in place, this is giving me some clearance to my legs from the wheel. I can see the gauges nicely. That's the, the top of the sort of the dash right there is pretty much level with the bottom of the rim. So that's perfect. Doesn't obscure any vision out the front. It's got a nice a bit of an angle to it. I can, I can sort of just rest my hand down there. I can rest my hand up here. So as with this big bar here, we're actually gonna take more tubing, this will be box tubing this time, and we're gonna bring it out from the A-pillar. We're gonna come forward, over, back, behind the engine, and then complete it back on that side again. And we're gonna use one by two, this is aluminum, but it's the same dimension, um, and that's gonna live sort of right through there, providing a bit of clearance to the engine. These two bolts on the back of the bell housing, we just have to just live with the fact that you're not going to, be able to get to them from the engine bay, maybe a access panel from the inside of the car, I don't know. But what we've got here now is technical drawing technical <laughs> for what drawing. we're looking for. Again, right, there's the shape. Tried to take some dimensions. We got some hypotenuse action going on and stuff, which, you know, you know, all these kids watching when, you, when you're in school and you say, when am I ever going to use this? Apparently you do. I, <laughs> who knew? Here, here we are. <laughs> but we've uh, already transferred some of these dimensions onto our piece of steel that we're going to be working with. So we'll head over there in a second and take a look at that. But we're pretty much ready to grab a grinder and start actually making it. So cross your fingers that all of this actually works. <laughs> I know I don't always speak about safety on this channel, but you really do want to make sure when you're using these kinds of equipment that you wear long sleeves, long pants, you know, no flip flops. You don't want to be one of those guys, like that guy. Yeah, you don't want to be him. Yeah, that's right. Anyways, let's get to this. Done correctly, this flimsy little thing will bend into the shape that we needed. So, let's... It's about 90. It looks just a hair under 90, but I think we can call that the width of a blade and move along. This then comes over that way. That whole thing comes over that way. Again, the width of a blade, I think, although that looks slightly wider than I would expect. But then that. There. And uh, yeah, generally it doesn't really feel like it's fitting and the stuff's falling over, but that's the idea. I find that very annoying. But it's way better than it was the last time, so we're just gonna run with it. And nobody will ever know, except you and us. <laughs> that's right, don't tell anybody. Uh, well, but, but please, share, subscribe. Yeah. <laughs> share yeah, don't with your friends. Don't tell, don't tell anyone, anybody. Don't tell people, please. Yeah. <laughs> 
So kids, remember, stay in school and you too can learn your trigonometry to avoid issues like that. <laughs> Numbers were reversed, additions were subtracted, we don't know what happened, but too much metal came out of there, so that's okay. What we're gonna end up doing is leveling things across the top as they're supposed to be, making sure the sides are square the way they're supposed to be, and then we're just gonna put some little gussets kind of over top of that. But yeah, another, don't know what happened there. Yeah, another one of those things to keep to yourself. <laughs> With some petals removed down there, the hope is that this will fit. It is the idea. And that came back further through here than we were thinking, because we were originally aiming for a three inch difference from this face to this face, but then however these angles got messed up, that's just come back a little further, but I think we can still work with that. To be entirely transparent, getting this new piece located perfectly is a critical step, as a lot of items are gonna tie into it and a number of clearances will be affected. So we put things on hold for a while, most of the winter as it happens, and continued to give it all thought. Thankfully, after more fiddling around and mocking up than you'd ever think necessary, we're finally happy. And it's turned out the factory dash could still be useful after all. The evaporator core may just need to sit further towards the passenger side, but there should be clearance to the rearmost exhaust manifold bolts, and on the whole, it's an attractive enough package that should work well if we can make it happen. The back of the 1x2 is currently set up with an 8th inch gap to the A pillars for some strengthening plates. So let's rip it all out again and get things finished up. So with that, we've got some real structure added to the car and it's only gonna get better from here. For those wondering, the new tunnel is going to be fully steel, unlike the original design, and we did use some cardboard to ensure the new profile would be an acceptable size before welding in those longitudinal beams. Some future design concepts are in place here, but I don't wanna give everything away just yet, so hang in there and all will be revealed in time. Yes, Clearances are very tight in places, and mounting up the steering column, master cylinders, pedals, and everything else will be jobs of their own. But we've made good progress today, so I think we'd better call it there. Wish us luck as we try to make sense of the next steps. If you've made it this far, thanks for watching and hopefully sharing this video. A very special thanks to all our amazing patrons and donators who support the channel, and if you're interested in helping out as well, there are links in the description below. Keep building! and we'll catch you next time. We have a wheel connected to a thing, connected to another thing, turning our wheels.